So in chapter one of The Shallows, um, Carr gives us a brief introduction of how the internet has been chipping away at our capacity of our patients and has caused our ability to stay focused to dis like decrease. Um, he also talks about the ability to review and scan information online has made us smarter from the quicker way that we can access materials. He provides a, a brief and like explanation of how he's lost his own concentration and how it often drifts away and he loses his train of thought. Um, and mainly this is because our brains are hungry to be fed by the internet. And internet is turning us into a high speed processing machine. He also introduces the term information overload and also he introduces how we use the computer he talks about his first apple computer which i'm actually using that right now because i love my apple i mean why not you can do so much with it um but yeah so moving on to chapter two he kind of starts this off with more talking about the actual neurological science of the brain um he starts about he starts the chapter with a story about Frederick Nietzsche, who was some writer that fell off a horse is what I got from that, but he ended up using a typewriter, which helped him his ability to continue writing, and he learned a lot from that. Um, he also includes um, a sensory test with monkeys, which I found this kind of interesting um, to learn about because I've taken psychology classes and I know that they use a lot of um, monkeys and stuff like that to use to learn about like our neurological and psych or psychological abilities. Um, mainly the main purpose I think of chapter two was just to really talk about how brain science has advanced. Um, he talks about the vital paths of, of our brain, how we are very um, resistant to um, change, but it's also very difficult to turn back. Um, plasticity is also a very big term that is discussed in chapter two, and he gives a lot of different explanations on that with several different different scientists, like definitions and all of that. Um, I found that really interesting to learn from a science and bio biological perspective about how our brain physically works. Um, in chapter three, he kind of shifts more to cog like cognitive development, which is more of a psychological development. Um, he talks about kids, how they learn to process their drawings through from what they see to what they know as they grow older. Um, he talks about mechanical clocks. Um, he also talks about how technology can be separated into four parts. This is the fighter jet, um, the microscope, a reservoir, and then lastly, intellectual technology. I really liked the, um, the ex explanation that he used for intellectual technology, um, how it's all the tools that support our mental powers. I mean, it's how we use watches, it's how we use even our phones, our computers, our clocks. Um, mainly, he, a big part of this chapter was he compares oral history to the liter like literacy, and he talks about how it has really um, changed. Like language and writing used to be very oral, and now it's very written, and our ability to write is essential um, to human potential. In chapter four, um, he really just get, dives really into far like BC history about how um, we have learned to write. We've learned to write through like s syllables. We have um, the first writing mediums, tablets. Uh, he talks about how the value of reading. He mentions Francis Bacon in there a few times. Um, but mainly what I got from this is 
that is the deepening of our complexity, our, our complexity, sorry, can't say it, has expanded our consciousness and it has allowed our, the deepening of the page with deepening complex, complexity. Sorry, I can't say that word. Um, but the new world world will remain like a literacy world and not an oral world. And he says, writing and print are always ways of technologizing. And once we have technologized something, there's no way of going back. So that's kind of a brief summary. So my personal thoughts on the information is I found, uh, I really like chapter one. I think chapter one kind of just made me really think about my own personal life. Um, you know, social media is so big. Um, I liked how he brought in the Apple example of how he, excited he was to get the MacBook Air because I probably had the same explanation. You know, I used to have like a little, like, was it Dole or whatever it was called, <laughs> computer windows. But then once I got a, you know, an Apple iPhone and then I finally saved up and got a MacBook, I was super excited because everything would connect and, um, I could process my, you know, my phone through my computer and stuff like that. It's super interesting. Um, I really, I've heard about the term information overload in my past classes. Um, I took, what class was that I took? It was like, um, oh, it was Com Theory I took last semester, but sorry about that. Um, but we really talked about information overload and how our how society is shaped through media content and how information overload causes a lot of anxiety and depression and stuff like that so i found that pretty interesting um it was good to learn about the biological's perspective and I could kind of relate that back to like biological classes again I've taken taken philosophy I've taken psychology I've taken bio so it was really cool to kind of learn more about that um I felt that a lot of cars work through one to four really related to um the current reading that I worked on this week which was um how computers are getting better at writing. I thought I found a lot of similarities in there about, you know, topics about how the internet is endlessly advancing and the more it continues to innovate, the more it's going to, you know, consume us. So I found that very interesting. But I think that's all I got. So thank you.